My name is David Pere, and today we are going to talk about getting started with short-term rentals. What do I know about Airbnb hosting? Well, I have stayed in several Airbnbs. I'm joking. That does not give me any credibility. I've actually been renting rooms out of my house on Airbnb ever since getting stationed in San Diego. I have learned a great deal about Airbnb in that time, but it always frustrated me that I had to know what questions to ask. There weren't really any complete guides to Airbnb hosting, and I decided to compile a list of everything that I wish I'd known when I started into two videos. This is the first one. Intro. Now, this guide will tell you everything you need to know starting out, even if you don't know what you don't know yet. Oh yeah, and I also own 13 long-term rentals at the moment, amongst many others that have come and gone, so I know a little bit about real estate, not a ton. Now, is Airbnb hosting for you? The first thing I need to address is that short-term rentals, such as Airbnb hosting, take a lot more work than long-term rentals do. You will be required to build systems, hire cleaners, managers, etc if you want this to become a passive income source. Now, that being said, Airbnb hosting can be extremely lucrative. I have made as much as $2,300 and then some change in a single month renting out just one of the bedroom bathrooms that I have in my unit and sharing the living room, kitchen, and garage. Now, granted that I have rent Granted that I'm renting this room out in North San Diego County, but I've only been doing it for a few months and I still have some kinks to work out, so it'll be even better. Now, Airbnb is not for you if you aren't willing to put in a little work, at least until the systems are in place, if you can't stand the idea of strangers in your home, or if you cannot be a good host, or if you have little kids, because if you're renting a room, kids may get you poor reviews depending on their noise levels. Now, Airbnb hosting might be for you if you understand it may take a little work to get off the ground, if you're willing to build and learn new systems, if you want to turn a room or two or three of your home into an income machine and you don't mind having strangers in your home. Maybe you need to be okay with fluctuating monthly income because it's not necessarily set. And there's a myriad of reasons why short-term rentals might be a great or terrible fit for you. But if you keep reading, I guarantee you'll know by the end of the article if you want to do this. Now, I'll have some links below so that if you want to get interested in becoming an Airbnb host, you can earn an extra 50 bucks on your first hosting or get $50 off even if you just want to go and try to be a guest. First, I want to touch on some Airbnb hosting strategies. So as with long-term rentals, there are many different strategies that you can choose to utilize. There is a way to make money with Airbnb no matter what your living situation, and you can experiment with several of these to see which is the best fit for you. Now, vacation rentals is where this all began. In fact, vacation rental by owner, VRBO, actually existed long before Airbnb. They are a good platform too, and as you'll see later, I recommend that you utilize both for your rental. Back in the day, it cost a fortune to own a vacation home. Now, you can rent it out for 90% of the year and stay in it for 10% of the year. Imagine owning a vacation home that literally pays for itself 90% of the year. The vacation rental strategy is a great method to turn your summer winter vacation home into an asset when you're not staying there. It might even be cash flow positive when you're not living there. Now, you could also do the spare bedroom or ADU, and this is kind of what I'm doing at the moment. The best part is that you don't even need to own the property for this. I got my landlord to agree to me renting out a room on Airbnb while I rented their home. Now, I don't want to make this sound easy. I emailed at least 30, probably closer to 50 landlords before I found one who was okay with me doing this. That being said, I pay $3,000 a month for my home and renting only one room has resulted in as much as over 2,300 a month. So I'm about to open a second listing in my property and rent out an upstairs bedroom as well. After that, I should be basically getting paid to rent a brand new home in San Diego County, which is awesome. For this strategy, you need to be okay with crossing paths with your guests and having conversations with strangers in your home. I have found that a lot of them enjoy talking with me and are actually pretty cool. Now, the rental arbitrage strategy is the idea of renting a home and then renting the entire home on Airbnb. This is different from the above strategy because you're renting the entire home rather than just a room in your home and you don't actually need to live there. The beauty with this strategy is that your landlord is still on the hook for maintaining the property, so all you do is pay rent and operate the short-term rental. Again, you need to be upfront and honest with your landlord, though, about this. Some of them are cool with it, and it definitely isn't worth hiding and getting in trouble and having a lease break. Now, my friend and podcast guest, Julian Sage, is a master of this and has a platform full of educational content. 
He also has some wonderful investment opportunities that you can check out. I definitely recommend you go down below and check it out. Let him know that Dave sent you. Now you could also create a unique destination or experience. Airbnb hosting now allows you to guide experiences too. So if you're a skydive instructor in the area, you could advertise a skydiving experience on Airbnb for people to buy. The best part is they don't even need to be staying at your listing to take advantage of this. So you can't complain about more advertising. Now there are some unique destinations on Airbnb as well. I've seen tiny homes, RVs, houseboats, themed homes, tree houses, and all kinds of other stuff. You're really only limited by your imagination as long as the listing is safe. Now, there are many ways to piece these various short-term rental strategies together in order to come out on top. Have fun, be creative, and find the strategy that works best for you. Now that you've decided to give Airbnb hosting a shot and chosen the strategy that appeals to your situation the most, let's get started. The first thing you need to know is are you breaking the law? So stop right now. No, not really. But before you do anything else, verify that your short-term rental is legal. I, I can't stress this enough. If you live in New York, I'm sorry, but it most likely isn't as of this recording. To discover this, I would talk to other investors in the area and see what the word on the street is. And then you need to check with your city, county, homeowners association, landlord if you're renting, state, or anyone else that might have information on the matter and ensure that you're in the clear. In Hawaii, for example, there are several zoning codes that do not allow short-term rentals and some that do. But if you're caught Airbnb hosting in these areas where there, there is a hefty fine and you'll be stuck paying it. Now, honestly, you might find that it's worth paying that fine if you're making enough money through Airbnb. Now, that's a decision you need to take and I don't want any part of that. So just do your homework and verify that you are not gonna be getting penalized. Now you need to set up your rental space. So you wanna make a good first impression and you need to have clean, picturesque rooms. So I see pictures on Airbnb sometimes and the rooms appear cluttered, dimly lit, and just yucky. And that's not how you want your rental to be represented. So if you aren't a designer by nature, check out Modsy, which will design the layout of your space for as little as $79 and they do a pretty good job. The basics for a room should be bed, closet, bedside table, and some subtle decorations. For example, I have a simple artistic piece above the bed that is literally just a picture my wife got mounted on poster board, but it looks nice. Then we put two old end tables in and some simple beach themed stuff scattered around. Having a television in the room is great, but it's really not necessary. I have a nice one in the living room, so I just left that alone. I didn't put a TV in, the bedroom, my dresser, you know, it's not necessary either because most of your guests are going to be traveling out of a suitcase. Just think it through. Now we got the mattress from a friend for free and all in all this setup probably cost less than $300. But most of the stuff we had already owned, we spent less than 150 bucks to actually set this up and it's earning me over 10 times that amount every single month. As a side note, I just set up my second room through uh, the Black Friday and I actually did, I think it was like 400, $450 for everything like mattress, bed frame, TV, sheets, bedding, towels, I mean, the works. So it can be really affordable to get started depending on how all in and all out you wanna go. And the rent by room strategy is easier, especially if you already have it furnished. Also, you need to keep all common areas clean and think of some ways to make them feel at home. So for example, I like to provide coffee for my Keurig so that my guests can have a drink. I'll put a complete list below in the kit.com and you can check out some of the items that I like. So don't forget that simple and clean is the name of the game for most successful Airbnb rooms. There are some themed exceptions, but you need to know what you're doing if you plan to do a themed listing. Airbnb hosting is often like glue. Less is more. Do you want creepy, dirty, smelly people living in your house? No? Neither do your guests. Your profile needs to radiate great things about you. Post a professional headshot, a short bio, and make sure you get verified. So link your Facebook to your Airbnb account in order to allow potential guests to see how many friends you have and confirming that you're in fact a real person. Uh, you can also, and, and you really should confirm your mobile number so that guests can reach out to you. Both of these simple tasks will really help your ranking. You may not think these things matter, but I promise you that perception is reality. If you have a clean, concise profile and a good looking headshot, people will feel more comfortable booking your space. You also need to hire a professional photographer. If you don't think it's worth the money to pay for a professional photographer, Go look at some short-term rental listings in your area. Uh, I'll wait. Yeah, I would show you my original pictures, but as soon as I saw them next to the professional photos, I deleted all of them. Yeah, they're, 
there was that big of a difference. They aren't in existence anymore. I thought I had done a decent job taking pictures of my place, but after seeing the professional photos, I would give myself maybe a solid four out of 10. Luckily for you, Airbnb has a brilliant program that takes care of this for you when you begin Airbnb hosting. They will reach out to you and offer to hire a professional photographer on your behalf, and then they will pay for this photographer out of your next listing income, which is super convenient and you don't even need to worry about the billing. Uh, the one downside with this is that Airbnb technically owns the rights to these photos, so it may be worth hiring a professional photographer outside of their platform, but I'm happy with the service they provided, so no big deal. Bottom line, clean the house, open the windows, and bring in a professional to, photo to photograph your listing for the world to see. Now that the basics are taken care of, let's dig into some of the best practices to make your listing more appealing and more successful. Be honest about your listing. All of the information, including its features, type, hazards, and the habitability is used should be 100% accurate. Don't try and hide the negatives or you'll get bad reviews. I just saw somebody post online, this is what they said my house was gonna look like, this is what it really was gonna look like, and it was like staged furniture. Man, it got blasted on Facebook. And I guarantee Airbnb probably either really docked that listing or got rid of it after those reports and reviews came in. Also, be honest about your availability. Don't say that you'll be on the property if you won't and vice versa. The, the bottom line is this, be open and honest about everything on your listing. There are a ton of options that you can choose for amenities in both of the Airbnb and VRBO hosting sites. So it may take a little while, but ensure that you go through them all thoroughly because you wanna take advantage of advertising every single amenity you offer. Some examples of great amenities to have are a Keurig with K-Cubs provided, shampoo, conditioner, towels, dishes, internet, cable, TV, HVAC, and all sorts of other things. Anything you could say that would make their stay feel a little bit more like home needs to be listed here. Your goal should be to take the best amenities from a hotel and the best from your home and then combine them to create an unforgettable experience for your guests. Now, I recommend that you create a guest book for your visitors. Airbnb actually has a way for you to do this on your listing, but I make a physical copy too. And my guest book is just a laminated paper that showcases the best restaurants, uh, tourist attractions, hikes, and other stuff in the area. I also list my Wi-Fi name and password, amenities, instructions, and any other information that could make my guests feel like they're more comfortable. So verify the map is accurate. Do not forget this step. My property is so new that the address doesn't show up in Google Maps yet. For this reason, Airbnb and VRBO are unable to locate my listing on their maps. After typing in the address, I had to manually move the location dot on the map to the proper location. Even still, I wasn't really confident that people wouldn't end up at the wrong neighborhood, which in my case is a 55 and up retirement mobile home park three miles away. So the that wasn't gonna work. So the easy solution is that I have a saved message I send immediately after any guest is booked with me. This simple message gives them a direct link to my home and the code for them to access the property. By sending this right away, I know there shouldn't be any issues locating or accessing my property. Even still, I've had one guest go to the wrong location, but they quickly realized their mistake and admitted it was on them and not my fault. So I still got my five-star review. And for that, you should smash the like button. Be diligent here and don't assume that people will know what you mean. Break down the directions as simple as humanly possible because if they don't understand, they will get, they will not be happy and ultimately your review could suffer. I just realized how long this video was and I'm gonna actually make this a three or four part series for Airbnb. So tune in for the next video.